All right, guys, we get started here. Some positives from the game. Damone Clark, 19 tackles, uh, two and a half tackles for loss, one sack, leads the nation in tackles. And 98, he has 98 tackles. So proud of him, and his play was phenomenal. He was all over the field. I thought he played with great effort, showed us great leadership. Neil Farrell had nine tackles, three tackles for a loss and a sack. That's his most productive game here as a Tiger. Uh, he still has some gap integrity stuff to take care of, and he knows that. But very proud of the production of Neil. On offense, some of the things we got to improve. Obviously, scoring on the goal line uh, when we didn't score down there was a key to me in the ball game. A minus three in the turnover ratio. Uh, we we did we not get uh, enough turnovers, and we uh, had too many turnovers. Didn't protect the quarterback like we wanted to. And we just couldn't find the seams and we didn't block their stunts and slants like we wanted to in the run game. On defense, it all came down to gap integrity. Just stay in your gap and tackle and set the edge. Those are the two biggest things that we got to improve on coming up this week. Open date, fix LSU first before we move on to our opponent. Our guys are self-scouting today. Uh, tomorrow will be a light practice. Wednesday will be a light practice. Thursday will be the Tiger Bowl. Thursday and Friday, all our coaches, including myself, will be out recruiting and watching games. Any questions? Hey, Coach, good morning. A couple questions for you. Uh, the talk after the game, at least what I'm hearing is to, to ask you is about adjustments, uh, halftime adjustments and maybe a lack of adjustments. Looking at the film, do you feel like you guys could have done, changed some things? No, no question. I think that's something that we have to get better at during the game. You know, Jock, you don't want to wait to halftime. I, I want to get those things fixed on the sideline after the series. Sometimes it's happening, sometimes it's not. But obviously in the third and the fourth quarter, when we're not playing well, we need to do better at halftime adjustments. There's no question about that. Coach, how do you think your assistants are doing juggling, kind of in their brain, wondering where am I going to be working next year, and then also trying to do the best job they can for, for LSU at the moment? You know, what I see every day, they're doing the best job for LSU at the moment. Uh, we have meetings. Everybody's early for meetings. Uh, we have uh, offensive and defensive meetings. That door's shut. They're in there. Nothing has changed in the building as far as I know. Hey, Coach. I know you mentioned recruiting uh, just a couple minutes ago. Just what does recruiting look like on a typical open week for you guys? And I guess maybe how does it change this year, uh, if any? Yeah, you know, uh, evaluation. You know, you can't talk to the guys. You got to take care of Louisiana first. We're going to Louisiana. We're going to see some key players in Houston. Uh, we go to the school, obviously, just talk to the guidance counselor, check their grades, ask the coach how they're doing, maybe see a workout, maybe not see a workout, but definitely see a game. I think it's more or less being visible and then number two, evaluate and still evaluate some prospects out there. But a lot of the prospects that we're seeing are committed to us and or have, have an offer from us. So it's just a matter of recruiting and going to recruit the coach. Obviously, can't talk to them. No, you know, Max is still out of starting quarterback. He was a little beat up. You know, he got hit. And, uh, you know, he made a tremendous play to Trey Palmer. That was a tremendous play, and he took a big hit. And he was getting some hits in there. And uh, we, I just wanted to give him a break, uh, get Garrett some time. I told Garrett I'd give him some time. But Max is still out of starting quarterback. But if there's a chance for us to give Garrett some time in there, some quality reps, we will. It got to a point there against Ole Miss to where you, you guys were down, down to some third string guys in there in the secondary, you know, with injuries and other things going on. Is, uh, is there an update on how some of those guys are do, doing, um, what the plan on the bye, whether it be Cordell Plot, uh, Major Burns, and, and, and those guys? Yeah, Major is not available right now. Uh, Cordell Flott is won't be available this week for practice. Uh, hopefully he's available next week. I will not know that. Uh, Anthony Bradford will be unavailable the rest of the season. Uh, that's only the only update I have right now to give you definitely. Hey, Coach, Steve Moulton, WZZN. I feel like I'm the uh, designated asking about Miles Brennan. Uh, how is uh, his rehab coming along, and is there any update on his status? Yeah, he was thrown the other day. I, I don't expect him back next week. Uh, I have not talked to him. Uh, uh, Bo hasn't said anything about him practicing. I don't think he's ready to practice right now, and I don't expect him back next week. 
And I, I do have one more. Uh, you played both of these teams. Uh, they're matching up this week. Just got through with Ole Miss. Ole Miss-Auburn, what do you think of that matchup, Coach? Two good football teams. It'll be a good game. Hey, Ed, Ed Daniels here. Coach, when, when the recruits ask you about the future, yeah, and that's obviously something that's going to come up, sir, what do you tell them? You know, I tell them that uh, I recruited them to come to LSU. LSU is still the same, that I want them to come to LSU. I still think LSU is going to be a great place for them. And I told the athletic director, I'm going to recruit for LSU until the day I'm not here, and probably some after. So uh, I believe in LSU. I've always believed in it, especially when you're a young man from the state of Louisiana. Uh, this is the best school for you to come to school at. And I, I wholeheartedly believe that, and I'm not going to back off of that. Bradford, I also didn't see Cam Wyatt at the game. Do you have to take this week to evaluate what you have along the offensive line? Yeah, I think Cam's going to be ready. Uh, looks like Cam's going to be ready. We talked about it this morning, and uh, we're going to see how he does this week. But I do believe he's going to be ready. Chase on as well, maybe? Uh, maybe. Uh, not, not able to practice in the next couple of days, but I think he's going to be ready for Alabama. Hey, Coach, I mean, we've really got to see a lot of these freshman receivers this year. I know we've asked you about them a lot, but just, you know, Malik Neighbors is one guy that I think has come along really the last couple of weeks. What do you like about him and kind of his development over the last couple of weeks and what he can do yeah. for us this season? Very smooth receiver, great route runner, has great eye discipline, catch radius, is very, very competitive. And, uh, you know, he also played defense. He's tough. I mean, he could probably start for us at safety. He is an excellent athlete. He's going to be an excellent player here. Hey, Coach. A uh, couple of fill of the week, if you don't mind. You talked about Neil and his progression. Kind of like the moan. What, what did you guys specifically want him to improve upon? No. And, and why do you think he's having such a good season? Yeah. Open field tackling, pass coverage. And I, Mike, you come out here any Saturday or Sunday, any time during the day, Usually, in the offseason, the ball's working out. I mean, he is relentless, and uh, he's worked a lot on his hip flexibility. You know, he's a big, strong athlete, very fast. Now he's working on his flexibility where he can flip his hips and man coverage. And you see the other day, he's done a phenomenal job on that, and his open field tackling has just been, just been off the charts. That tackle he made on that quarterback on the sideline and him running that, that, uh, that quarterback down was a phenomenal football play. How about Neil? Because he's a guy that, you know, I guess what, he sat out right last year yep. and then, you know, had to come back and get conditioned. And, yep. Uh, just what has he really improved upon? You know, Neil, Neil, first of all, he's improved in his condition. He still has a ways to go. He lost some weight. But you know what? Neil came back hungry. Neil has a great feel for the ball. Sometimes it's great. Sometimes it gets him in trouble. You know, he jumps out of his gap and he makes a big play. And sometimes he jumps out of his gap and it gets the ball goes into his gap. So I think that uh, his awareness, his ability to shed blocks, uh, it's, it's, it's been hard for, for them to single block him. He has destroyed some single blocks. He's played really, really well with his technique because he explodes and he comes out of his hips and uses his hands. The thing he still needs to work on is gap discipline. Do you think that year away made him hungrier? Do you think that changed yeah. his mindset? Yeah, no, he, he came back a different cat. Uh, and then just finally on the practice side of things this week, um, you talk about taking it slow. Obviously, you got a lot of you know yeah. injuries. You got a man, et cetera. Is it is it is this week really about self scouting and like let's figure out yeah. uh, kind of get back to fundamentals? A lot of times, coaches you use the open day to you know to stress the fundamentals and tackling, yeah. et cetera. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, you know what? Right, like, we're not going to have any pads on all week. We're going to give the guy the, the, their beat up. You know, they've been going eight weeks straight plus camp. Uh, we got a lot of nagging injuries, so we just, we're going to go helmets and uh, spider pads, but it's going to be more teaching. Uh, we have some things on offense and defense that we want to put in and uh, we want to look at, so it's a good time to do that and also a good time to self-scout. But basically, we're going to have a Monday practice tomorrow and a, uh, just an installment practice on Wednesday, and then the, the younger players bet the scrimmage in the Tiger Bowl on Thursday. Coach, uh, you, you mentioned about Alabama earlier. Uh, do you have an early thought on how Alabama looks so far this year? <laughs> Very good again. You know, I watched, I, you know, I watched them play on TV when we see them, and uh, 
obviously a very well coached football team, very, very talented, very disciplined. Coach, I know we've been talking about Damone for the past two days about physically what he's improved on, but when I watch him, he's just as happy for other guys making plays as he is for himself. I mean, is that leadership quality, is that kind of one of the biggest things, especially in a time like this where you're in, where you're kind of low on the roster? Well, I, I think Damone has done a tremendous job for us in that area. Uh, we count on Damone. Uh, he's from the Baton Rouge area. He loves LSU. He's got a bright future. And uh, his leadership uh, qualities are, are, are invaluable for us. And uh, he's been a leader ever, ever since he stepped on campus here. And we really appreciate his leadership. Coach, a lot of talk about Damone today. I'm just curious, uh, what impact has Blake Baker had on him in that regard? And what's it been like to be around Blake as a young assistant? Yeah. What, what kind of future do you think he has? Yeah, Blake's outstanding coach, outstanding recruiter. Uh, he has a great uh, relationship with his players. I know his players love him. Uh, he's a good fundamental coach. Uh, he and I, went in, uh, in his interview, agreed on uh, how to deliver a blow, how to use your hands, how to lock, peek, and shed. All the things that we teach as defensive linemen that we learned from Pete Jenkins, he was in total agreement with it. Uh, he comes from the same family background of coaches that I come from. But he, the, thing, the thing that uh, Blake is the most talented at, he knows how to deliver it to his players, and his players believe in him. Hey, Ed, um, obviously uh, one of your skills uh, is known for being a, motivator, a, a good motivator of players. Do you feel like it, you have to motivate them in a different way for these last four games or, or say anything different or, or given, given the situation, or do you feel like that they're, they're still well motivated? I, I feel they're still well motivated, Scott. There was, a, there was a lot of want to before that game and still throughout the game. And, and, as far as want to, I have not seen that in this team. I do believe a week off is going to help. I do believe us playing Alabama next week is a, not much has to be said. It sh shouldn't be because of the type of team that Alabama is. We're going on the road to play them. So I think our guys are going to finish out. There's a lot of guys that are in their last year that want to finish out, that want to play great. There's some young guys that want to uh, prove themselves. So I think there's a lot of motivation. In fact, I know there's a lot of mo motivation left. There's a lot of motivation in our staff. Our practice has been energized. Nothing has gone down in our practice as far as energy and the volume our players are putting out. So I believe it's going to be a strong finish. Hey, Ed, uh, two questions. The first one, uh, you know, all this talk about DeMond Clark, how important and impactful has it been for him to have this kind of a season while representing number 18? Yeah, you know, <laughs> that's a good point. No, and, 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 you know, the number 18 – is uh, character, uh, what you do on and off the field, you know, sort of like the perfect player, you know, and uh, not necessarily is the best player. And we gave him the number 18 because of academics, his leadership, his work in the weight room, the way he handles himself, and then to be a great player on top of it just adds to the number, which is a great number. It's a great tradition. I love the tradition. And uh, I know this the game is not until next weekend, but, I mean, waking up today or going forward, have you had any thoughts about next weekend being your last game against Alabama, as LSU said, Coach? You know, I don't look at it like that. You know, I, I don't have time to look at it like that. And again, it's not me. It's not about me. I mean, this is about me representing these young men. You know, I take it one day at a time. You know, today we're working on self-scout. I, I think I'm going to worry about that when it's all said and done. <laughs> I'm going to look at it and say, man, it passed by fast, you know. But until then, I'm not, I'm not even going to think about it. And uh, just wanted to sneak in here before you go. Uh, Jamar Chase obviously is tearing it up in the NFL, yeah. and you saw that firsthand. If you could speak to you know, his skill set and, and how it's really exploded. And, uh, yeah, both him and, him and Justin, I guess, have both yeah. been taken over. They're just so happy for him. I mean, I know how hard they work. I know what type of human beings they are. They're great people. You know, look at it. Both of them from the state of Louisiana came to LSU, developed, and, and they're having the uh, – a great career in the NFL, you know, their families are happy, you know, Joe is happy. I just, I'm just so happy for all of them that represent LSU in the state of Louisiana. And then again, these guys poured their heart and their soul out for the state of Louisiana and LSU, and now they're getting in return. And I'm so happy for all of them.
Hey, Coach, I noticed that Dre Jenkins has continued to kind of increase his role these past mm -hmm. couple of games. Um, I just wanted to know if you could speak on what he, how he has progressed yeah. and how you expect him to finish out this season. Yeah, he stepped up. He saw, he's, he saw an opportunity, and he competed. And uh, there was, there was a, who was going to be the next guy? And without verbally saying it, he went out there to practice and proved every day that he was going to be the next guy. And he's turned out to be a guy that we can count on. He's always been that. But now he's getting more balls. He's getting significant balls that maybe Kayshawn might have got. And uh, so he's earned his way. And uh, I believe he's going to have a strong finish. Dre's one of our team leaders from Gina, Louisiana. It's a great story. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Go Tigers.